Things have changed since Lily was born. I used to see Mark's face light up when I walked into a room, now, I'm lucky if I get a grunt before he buries his nose back into his phone. His job's the same, maybe even less stressful than before, but something in him switched off the day we brought her home. Another painting, Grace? What's that, the third this week? Mark's voice would grip the air, sharp and sneering whenever he watched me set up my easel. He used to admire my work, even had my best piece framed in his office once. Not anymore. Yeah, so? It's not like I'm spending your money, I'd answer, trying not to let him see the tremble in my hands, keeping my focus on mixing the blues and yellows on my palette. But inside, each word he volleyed felt like a punch. Could have fooled me. And look at this place. Looks like a damn tornado hit it. He'd scan the room, his eyes scanning every toy and blanket out of place, holding them up like evidence of my failures. Look, I'm with Lily all day, and she's a handful, I'd fight back, my voice not as steady as I'd liked. And maybe if you helped a little around here. Help? With what? You're home all the time, you deal with it. That was our deal, remember? I make the cash, you handle the rest. Not my fault you can't manage, he'd cut me off, leaving no room for argument. Every night ended the same, with him turning away and dismissing me with a scoff. When he left for work, Lily would tug at the hem of my shirt, her little eyes confused. Daddy mad? She would ask, her tiny lips quivering at the thought. No, baby, daddy just has a lot on his mind. Here, help mommy choose the colors, yeah? I'd pull her into my arms, trying to smile for her sake, guiding her hand to pick out colors. Together, we paint, and for a while, the bitterness in Mark's tone would get drowned out by her laughter and our shared world of color. I knew my paintings were good, not because I was full of myself, but because they were the only thing I had left from a time when I felt confident, vibrant. That evening, when Mark came home, I did what I always did. I tried to greet him with a warm dinner, a clean house, and Lily squeaky from her bath and dressed in her best pajamas. Hey! I said, the smell of roast chicken trailing behind me, how was your day? He grunted in reply, shrugging off his coat and throwing it over the couch. His eyes caught mine, then the easel set up in the corner of our living room. Still haven't gotten rid of that junk, huh? It's not junk, Mark. I'm working on something, I responded, the weariness seeping through. Looks like a waste of time. And money. You could be doing something productive, you know. He walked past me to the fridge, not waiting for an answer. Productive seemed to mean anything that made money or made his life easier. I wasn't doing either to his liking, I guessed. I am doing something, I said, my voice firmer now. I'm raising our daughter and keeping our home. And I'm trying to hang on to something that matters to me. My painting matters to me, Mark. He didn't even pause, just popped open a beer and drank deeply. Call it what you want, Grace. To me? Looks like you're just filling time, making a mess I'll have to pay someone to clean up. I felt the sting. Not from the unkindness of the words, I was getting used to that, but from the dismissal of my dreams, my passion. There wasn't a place for them in Mark's world anymore. Dinner's ready, I called out in what felt like a weekly performance, standing with quivering hands as I served the meal. Mark's parents, seated like judges at the head of the table, barely noticed my effort to create a warm, hearty meal. Their eyes were fixed on the easel by the window. What's this then? Mark's dad, George, a broad man with a voice that filled the room, jabbed a finger towards my unfinished painting. Oh, that's just something Grace has been fooling around with, Mark chuckled, waving a dismissive hand before taking his seat. Real high-class stuff, right? Laughter rang out, and it twitched at my nerves, laughter that didn't reach their eyes. My, my, we're an artist now, are we? Chimed in Mark's mom, Patricia, her voice a kind of sharp that could slice steel. Why don't you show us your latest masterpiece, dear? George bellowed, his smile more of a challenge than a gesture of interest. I stood, rooted to the spot, feeling the flesh spread up my neck. It's not done yet, I muttered, but Mark was already striding over to the canvas, 
grabbing it with less care than he'd take with a dish towel. Look at this, folks, Mark laughed, flipping the canvas around like he was Vanna White revealing a letter on Wheel of Fortune. It's supposed to be a landscape, can you believe it? George's laughter bloomed loud again, looks like a blind dog's nightmare. Patricia tooted, shaking her head, her nostrils flaring with each chortle. Why waste your time with this, hobby? Get a job or do something, anything, productive. As if any place would hire her, Mark snorted, setting the painting back with a thud that made my heart sink. The job market's tough out there, and well, look at her. I swallowed, hard. My hands clenched into fists at my sides. I do plenty. I take care of Lily, and this house, and... My words faltered under their collective stare. Patricia poked at the food with her fork as if she suspected it was poisoned. Taking care of your family is the least you can do, she sniffed, but honestly, Mark, if you'd married someone with a little ambition. They went on, tearing strips off me with every word, while I just stood there. The room closed in, their words pressing on my chest, squeezing the air from my lungs. I felt myself slipping away, becoming smaller, insignificant in this grand performance of theirs. Something in me snapped. As soon as the meal ended, with a fake tremor in my voice, I excused myself, marched up the stairs, not looking back, and locked myself in the bedroom. Grace? Mark's voice climbed up the stairs, maybe half an hour later, cracking through the door. You coming back down? We need to clear the table. I didn't respond. I couldn't. If I opened my mouth, a scream or a sob would have come out, and I wasn't going to give them the satisfaction of hearing my break. I scrolled through my bank app, a frown etching deeper lines on my face. Our account was looking dire again this month, and the grocery list wasn't getting any shorter. Lily needed new shoes, too. She was sprouting like a weed. Mark's voice tumbled in from the living room. Grace, why is there a charge for $48.95 for Martin's art supplies? Just picked up a few things, I said, tapping through the app to transfer what remained of my personal savings to cover it. I needed them. Needed? Come on, Grace. That's money we could have put towards something important, isn't it? His voice was flat, bored even, with a hint of something else, was it disappointment, frustration? I sighed. Art is important to me, Mark. The same way your golf is important to you. I didn't mention the fact that his golf clubs cost more than a year's worth of my supplies. Yeah, but golf is networking, it's part of my job. What does your painting get us? A cluttered house and wasted cash, he said, grumbling. It gets me through the day, I murmured, feeling that old, familiar tug-of-war in my chest. Mark snorted. Through the day, we have to be smart about money, not just spend it on whatever gets us through the day. Budget, Grace. Budget. That word felt like a choke chain. I pay for my art supplies with my own money, Mark. The money I had before. I trailed off, not wanting another fight. My before was a long-gone chapter, one that contained a job, independence, and a once-shared dream of my own gallery. Your money's our money, isn't it? He shot back, the insinuation that my financial independence was history, clear in his tone. And that your money is running out fast. What then? Later at the store, I chose the cheaper brands, counting every cent, every compromise. With the rest, I bought the smallest tubes of paint, the ones I could slip into the cart without raising eyebrows. Back home, I unpacked the bags with robotic precision, every item a testament to our tightrope walk above financial ruin. Putting back some luxuries, are we? Mark commented, his gaze landing on the no-name cereal and store brand pasta. Yes, tightening the belt, I answered without looking at him, hiding the receipts, a paper trail of my crimes. He hummed, rummaging through the bags like an investigator looking for a slip-up. Where are the Greek yogurts you like? And isn't this the cheap coffee? I shrugged, busying myself with placing a can of tomatoes in the pantry. Prices went up. Had to make some cuts. Don't see any cuts in your art budget, though, he said, a cold finger pointing out the new brushes I'd slipped under a loaf of bread. 
I turned to him, meeting his eyes for the first time since the conversation began. This keeps me sane, Mark. My art keeps me sane. My voice was firm, and I clenched my fist around the countertop to stop the shake in my hand. Well, sanity's quite the luxury item these days, eh? He nodded towards the brushes, his words deliberate, biting. That night, I painted not out of passion, but frustration. Each stroke was a challenge, a cut from our personal budget to fit it within the constraints of Mark's expectations. But as I worked, I remembered a time when these brushes were a joy to hold, not a weapon I had to defend. Mark was somewhere across the country, tangled up in business trip meetings when he decided to drop the latest task on me. His voice buzzed through my phone, sounding like he was already out the door, before he even finished his sentence. Grace, you gotta pull together a birthday present for my boss's wife, Clara. Her big days in a week. Okay, do you have any cash set aside for that? I asked, squinting at our already tight budget on my laptop screen. Nah, you figure it out. Just make it look like we put some thought into it, he muttered, sounding distracted. Hang on, you want something nice, but I'm supposed to magic up the funds for it? I could feel the heat rising in my cheeks. You always find a way. Make it happen, Grace. And with that cheery little line, he was gone. I let out a long, slow breath, closing my eyes and trying to push back the frustration gnawing at my last nerve. Didn't have the cash, but I needed something that would knock Clara's socks off. No pressure, right? After a deep dive into Clara's online world, it was clear she had a thing for art, her feed was full of gallery visits, pictures of canvases that probably cost more than our car. She even had photos with artists, talked about supporting the arts, patronage and all that jazz. An idea sparked, and I grabbed it before it could blaze out of my mind. A painting, from me. I had the paints. I had the canvas. I sure as hell had the motive. I'd give Clara something no one else could, not off some high street. I spun the idea in my mind, letting it settle. I could picture the brush strokes already, feel the drag of bristles against canvas. It would be personal, and it'd be free. Bonus. A painting, then. Decision made. I was going to need every minute of every day if it was going to look anything like the kind of stuff Clara posted. I pulled out my old easel, set it up in the living room, and got to work. All the while, fingers crossed that my little slice of creativity would cut it in the high-stakes world of business birthday gifts. Day 1 Postmark's bombshell, I'm standing in the middle of my makeshift studio, a corner of the dining room I've cleared out, pushing the table against the wall. The morning light streaming in, kinda highlighting the chaos of my art supplies spread all over. Mommy, what's all this? Lily, my six-year-old, parks herself right in the middle of the chaos, her eyes as round as the splattered paint drops on the floor. Mommy's gotta make a birthday present, baby. I reply, rifling through old brushes with bristles stiffer than my back feels. For who? She picks up a brush, examining the crusty edges like a pro. For a lady daddy works with, I explain, snatching the brush from her before it becomes a makeshift sword or fairy wand. Lily's forehead scrunches up in confusion. But why can't daddy buy something? Lily, go watch your cartoons, will ya? I need to think. I'm not in the mood to unpack the complexities of our bank account, or my marriage, to a kindergartner. Grumbling something under her breath, sounding too much like me for comfort, she trots off to the living room, leaving me to my quandary. The week grinds by. I'm pulling double shifts, daytime mommy, nighttime Picasso. The canvas starts to fill, taking on a life of its own. Something abstract, something that feels kind of like the whirlwind that's my life lately. I don't hear a peep from Mark. No check-in calls, not even a text asking how it's going. Guess he's too wrapped up in his charts and deals, and whatever he does that's too important to ring his wife. Lily, on the other hand, is my tiny shadow, always creeping back to watch me paint. You're really good, mommy. She says on like, what, day four? You should draw stuff more. I smile because that's probably the best review I'll ever get. Think so, huh? Maybe I will. 
The night before the big reveal, the painting's finally staring back at me, done. It's not just art, it's everything I haven't been able to say or do, all poured out onto canvas. I can't sleep that night, tossing and turning, thoughts swirling in my head, what if Clara hates it? What if Mark thinks I've wasted my time? What if? But the morning comes, clear and bright. The painting's wrapped up, no fancy paper, just brown parcel stuff, but neat. A nice bow from Lily's hair ribbons, because why not? So, there I was, at the boss's wife's birthday bash, my arms wrapped tight around a package, the painting I hoped would be a hit. I slid through the crowd, eyes low, wishing I could blend into the wallpaper. Mark was there too, just flown in hot from his latest trip, looking every inch the man who had it all, except the picture-perfect trophy wife. His eyes swept over the women, polished and perfect in their cocktail dresses, then landed on me like a ton of bricks. I saw that look on his face, like he just bit into a lemon. He looked me up and down and shook his head just enough so only I'd notice. The room faded a bit, like someone turned down the volume on the party, and all I could hear was my heartbeat in my ears. Then his gaze zeroed in on the parcel, all wrapped up and nestled in my shaky grip. His eyes flashed, and oh boy, I knew that look. I saw the storm brewing before the first word even shot out. What's that? He spat, barely keeping a lid on it. I pulled the package closer, as if I could shield it, and me, from what was coming. It's, a gift. My painting. The words barely had a chance to hang in the air, before his voice boomed. A painting? You're kidding, right? It was loud, loud enough to catch a few glances our way. I tried to shush him with my eyes, but he was past caring. You actually think this is okay? To hand her a piece of amateur hour? The whispers around us started like the start of a rain, soft, but getting stronger. Mark, please, not here, I begged, my cheeks flaming up something fierce. Did you lose your mind? He roared, and the room didn't just pause, it froze. You make us look like fools. By now, we were the main event. Eyes flicked to us, then away, then back again like they were watching tennis. I shrank, wished I could melt right into the floorboards. His face was a shade of red I'd only ever seen on traffic lights. Great, just great, Grace, he vented, throwing his hands up. You don't think, do ya? The heat in my face told me I was blushing, and not in a cute way. My hands shook, but I hugged the painting tighter, cause what else was there to hang on to? I took a breath, tried to remember why I thought this was a good idea. Now everyone's gonna have a go at us, thanks to you and your dumb idea, he added, sharp as a knife, for anyone still pretending they weren't listening. My mouth opened, words ready to tumble out, to defend or maybe just to tell him to put a sock in it. But what was there to say with the whole room's eyes burning holes into us? Instead, I just stood there, the fool he called me, wishing the ground would do me a favor and swallow me whole. The laughter after Mark's outburst felt like daggers. Even with the room spinning, I caught the boss's eye, he was just watching, all quiet, with something like confusion on his face. And his wife, Clara, she had this half-concerned, half-intrigued frown that actually gave me a sliver of hope. Clara waved a hand, cutting through the noise. Quiet down, everyone. Let's see what Grace has brought. I moved on autopilot, my hands still a bit jittery as they tore the paper from the canvas. The art kinda just spilled out into the room, all the colors and the shapes I'd spent nights pouring myself into. Clara's eyebrows shot up. Oh my, she said, and the room hushed like they were waiting for her to drop the hammer. But then she continued, this is quite something, Grace. Mark was still fuming by my side. Yeah, something all right. I ignored him and searched Clara's face for some sign. It's, um, it's for you, I mumbled. Happy birthday? She tilted her head, studying the painting like it was a puzzle. It's bold. I like bold. Don't you, darling? She nudged her husband, pulling him into this. The boss was a tough guy to read, but he nodded. Don't see something like that every day. Mark tried to jump back in. Oh, come on, you're saying you like this mess? 
And there it was, the snap in Clara's voice as she turned to him with a squint. Mark, I'd watch it if I were you. Your wife has talent, and I won't have you embarrass her any further. It's unbecoming. The room fell into this tense, kind of quiet, the kind where you could hear someone sneeze three houses down. Look at the colors, the feeling in it, Clara was saying now. It's got, life. Mark tried for a save, well, sure, if you like that sort of thing. But Clara cut him off. I do. It's decided. This goes right in the foyer. I blinked. Was this actually happening? You sure, babe? The boss chimed in. It's not exactly. Clara shot him a look, and he trailed off. Standard. Right. It's unique. Her arm shot out to me, a beacon in the high heels and overpriced suit, see. Thank you, Grace. This here's a real gift, folks. It's got soul. And just like that, the murmurs started up again, but they had a different tune. People were nodding, some even looking at me with what felt like respect. Clara, still holding my painting like it was a treasure, turned her eyes on me again. So, Grace, she said, drawing the room's focus, ever thought about showing your work? Like in a gallery? Mark let out a scoff. I heard it, but my eyes were glued to Clara. Nah, who'd want to see my stuff? Don't worry, Grace. I would. And I know people. Clara's voice was firm, her eyes sharp. Mark tried to laugh it off. Come on, Clara, she's just dabbling. Clara quirked an eyebrow at him. So she dabbles better than some pros I know. What's it to you? I swallowed, feeling like I was teetering on the edge of something big. I... I don't know. I've never. What's to know? You jump in. I'll help. Right? Clara's look said she wasn't asking, she was telling. A giggle slipped from me. It was nervous, a bit wild sounding even to my own ears. Sure. Right. Clara beamed. Good. It settled then. After that, whispers flitted around like moths to a flame. People who barely gave me the time of day were now hanging on my arm, talking about my work. It felt surreal, like walking through someone else's life. Mark was suddenly there again, his hand on my back almost scalding. You're not serious about this, are you? There was that edge in his voice, like a knife threatening to cut. I turned to him, feeling the weight of the crowd, the pull of something new. Yeah, I am. My voice was stronger than it had felt in years. He looked at me, really looked at me, for the first time that night. But, what about us? What about us, Mark? I repeated. We've been over for a longer time than I want to admit. That shook him. He stepped back. I thought we were fine. I turned to face him fully. You thought wrong. The words were colder than I intended, but they needed to be said. Mark ran a hand through his hair, looking beaten. So what, we just end it? I looked down at the colors splashed across the nails on my fingers, at the rings that didn't mean what they were supposed to anymore. We ended it a long time ago. Now we're just making it official. He didn't have anything to say to that. I watched him walk away, his shoulders hunched. Clara's hand touched my shoulder. You okay, Han? I nodded. I am. Thanks to you. She winked. What are friends for, right? And you, Grace? She paused, giving my shoulder a squeeze. You're going to light up this town with your art. Just you wait. And with that, I felt my heart start to hammer for a whole new set of reasons. Ahead of me, there wasn't just an ending. There was a beginning, and it was painted in the boldest colors I could imagine. Lily and I? We'd be more than fine. We'd be us, unapologetically, unfalteringly us.